guys, welcome back to a new vlog. My name is Kiara, aka Key Silas, but you can call me Kiara, Key, Kiki, whatever floats your boat. So today I am going to be on a panel for the University of West Georgia. I was approached by them in June or July to actually work on a panel for their con. It's kind of like Comic Con, but for them, it's like West Con. And they wanted me to be on a panel called Passion Into Pain to speak about my YouTube journey and how I'm navigating making extra income outside of doing a normal nine to five job. Isn't that cool? I am ecstatic. I have to be there at 12. It's like 11.05 or something like that. So I'm about to head out the house. I wanted to show you guys my outfit. So I have on this black blazer from H&M. My turtleneck is from Shein, I believe. My skirt is from Fashion Nova. I got this in 2021, I believe. I have on black tights. And then I have on my loafers from H&M. Also, my little headband is from H&M as well. So yeah, I'm about to go do that, y'all. It's going to be my first panel. I'm so excited. This is putting me in new spaces, opening up new doors for me. So it's something new and different that I didn't expect YouTube to take me into this sector, but I am excited. So let's head to West Georgia so we can speak on our first panel. I'll call y'all back. <laughs> okay, y'all, I finally made it to West Georgia. I'm just waiting on um, everybody to come so we can go into the meeting room. It is currently career day here. And this is my first time at West Georgia. So I had no idea what to expect, but this campus is beautiful. When I walked up, one of the young ladies told me that my outfit was really cute and she liked my outfit. So <laughs> y'all know they made me feel good. I'm trying to give y'all a full view of the fit. Y'all see the fit? Pretty with my brown tilfar bag. This is what we're looking like today. But like I said, I'm just waiting for everybody to get here. I was running late, but I can't believe I was the first one here. Y'all know been working on being on time but yeah I guess I'll show y'all around a little bit so I'm in the meeting room now we have us some lunch and we're gonna get interviewed by some of the students in West Georgia so she asked me who I was and she said she heard that I was a jack of all trades <laughs> I like that I like that but I'm about to put y'all on the tripod so we can get the content in okay Hey YouTube, I'm Lauren. I'm here today interviewing Kiara. Um, yeah, we're gonna have fun. <laughs> hey y'all, so we're about to start our interview. Wait, so what do you call your audience? I actually don't have a name. I've been trying to figure well, it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, it out. I'm good at that. I'm good okay, at okay, that. okay, okay, because I definitely need a name. Can you hear it? Let's see. <sighs> but we can hear in the second part. I mean, you about to get y'all the name, y'all. You will never get Hi, guys. Welcome back to the podcast. podcast. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Lauren. And today we have three special guests. guests today. Yes. So we have Jakeem Myers. Yay. We have Tyler Carter. Ooh. And we have. Kira Mitchell here yes. in the building. Yes. Round of applause. So let's start with some background. Yeah, like some background. Okay. Can like each of y'all introduce yourself, starting with you, please? Hey guys, my name is Tyler. Um, my last name is Carter, as they already said. Um, so I am a content creator. Uh, natural hair is the category, but I've also ventured into creative direction. But by day, I am a creative strategist. So. Uh, yeah, I don't know what else we want to talk about, but we're going to talk, of course, more 
later yeah. on. But yeah, born and raised, East Atlanta Zone 6. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Rap, oh, rap. You see you grad, went to the <laughs> Fort Valley State University. Okay. And yeah, I'm happy to be here. Yes. Yay. What about you? Yeah, my name is Joaquin Myers. Um, I'm an actor and a stuntman. I also went to the Fort Valley State University. Mm -hmm. Okay, another one, another one. Shout out to Ariel too. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I do a bunch of different things. I have a math degree. Um, I dabble in clothing and I have my own business. So yeah, okay. I'm a good mix of things. Okay, and you? Hi guys, I'm Kiara Mitchell. I go by Key Solace. I am a flight attendant and a YouTuber. I specialize in vlogging. I went to Albany State, but I did graduate from Georgia State. <laughs> don't do that, girl. Don't do that. Yes. By the way, y'all, that's Tyler that said that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. We're, we're here to keep the peace. Out. Okay. 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 So the first question I had to ask was, how did you get started in your industries? I heard mm -hmm. everybody graduated with a degree in a certain industry, but end up veering off and going somewhere else and being successful. Mm -hmm. So how did you get there? Let's start with Miss Kiera first. Okay. So I've always been a girl who had a camera in her hand, even as a child. Okay. Um, I started off really loving clothes. I used to tell my grandma that her house coat was ugly. <laughs> oh, oh, right. You doing that? Right. So, you know, you I used to like, like that. <laughs> that's, that's every grandma in yeah. America. Okay, yeah. yes. you know how they have that little <laughs> ugly robe. So, you know, I started off like kind of critiquing fashion, um, even as a kid. But as I got older, I used to start watching YouTube videos and it started in like the makeup community, but then it transferred to vlogs. Mm -hmm. And I'm seeing that people that I'm watching have similar lives to me. And I'm like, okay, I can, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But I started off in the banking field. So it was something that I wasn't interested in. I wanted to travel. So that led me into being a flight attendant. Yeah. So now I vlog my flight attendant life on my YouTube channel. And I, you know, input the fashion side into it as well. Because when you're a creative, you want to make sure that you have your hands in different pots yeah. so you can get different people to okay. come to your channel. Definitely. So I have a mixture of everything that I do. Okay, you a jack of all trades. Yeah. Can you shout out your YouTube? Yes, my YouTube is Key Solid. It's K I S O L A C E. Okay. So, you, Jacqueline, how did you like become an actor from doing mathematics? How did that happen? Okay. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, I've always uh, had a foot in both worlds of uh, the science and the arts. And uh, I guess for me, a big portion of my life has been finding a way to combine the science and the arts and finding how they interact with each other. So um, during the time that I'm in Fort Valley, I'm also a part of the theater club there. And um, I'm acting in church plays. Eventually, I pursue an option to do a talent showcase, and that showcase kind of taught me a lot of the ropes of the industry. Mm -hmm. So from there, I gained some industry connections, and uh, some opportunities opened up from some agents. Um, they actually were the ones to tell, tell me in uh, conjunction with my mom that, you know, finish school, have uh, other options. You know, that yeah. way you're not too desperate on just the acting thing. Mm -hmm. um, so from there, um, I did the showcase, and when I graduated from Fort Valley, I moved up to Atlanta and came across an open audition for Black Panther. And from that open casting call, I um, auditioned for the stunt team, and I got into the industry as a stuntman on Black Panther. Oh, wow. So, yes. wow. We're definitely going to ask more questions about that. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Wow. And Mr. Tyler. So for me, I think it's infused. Um, I started out at, in college, actually. College actually influenced me to start my YouTube channel. Uh, my natural hair journey started in college, so it was a mixture of figuring out what to do while also going on YouTube and finding different styles that fit my, you know, type of hair. Back when natural hair was kind of just starting off, so it wasn't a lot of resources, it wasn't a whole lot of creators at the time that had natural hair or had a variety of natural hairstyles. When I got home, I was like, there's like, I feel like if I wanted to do something where other people would say like, oh, that fits you, what would that be? 
and I pulled out my sketchbook and I started writing down stuff and I was like, I wonder if I did like a, a natural hair channel with people tune in where I'm not talking about how to do a hairstyle, but I'm chopping it up so much that it's unrealistic. Mm -hmm. I want people to see raw edits, you know, when the hair, the, when the comb breaks, when the bow breaks, like when you are tired yeah. and you don't get the style right or it's not like the YouTube video that you're watching. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's frustrating came from. Um, so, so Miss Kiara, we have a question for you. Yeah, I do have a question for you. Could you tell us more about transitioning into becoming a flight attendant mm -hmm. from like yes. where you started? Because I just want to know. I really want to know how that journey happened. Like, what made you like? I think I want to be a flight attendant. Did you go to flight school? You can use that airplane. No, I did not go to flight school, what? guys. So I started off in banking. I was a fraud specialist. Oh, and okay. that was a very tedious job. And it was boring. Oh. I said <laughs> that, yes, it was, it was, was boring. Real, mm -hmm. I sat at a computer all day, mm -hmm. staring at people's bank accounts, <laughs> trying to calm through what's going on you know people scamming these days so you really have to pay attention to the real transactions versus what's fraud okay so after a while when the pandemic hit we trans transitioned to <laughs> being at home so yeah. now i'm sitting in my house all day staring at a computer Mm -hmm. I'm the type of person, I'm a social butterfly. I like to be outside, I like to get to know different people, talk to different people from different walks of life, and I was confined to one specific spot. Yeah. So, I started to try to figure out what could I do to bring back the spunk in my life, mm -hmm. to bring back that spark, <laughs> because I lost it. Mm. I went through a situation where it kind of felt like I was getting depressed, because I wasn't living the life that I seen for myself. Mm -hmm. So sound like a testimony. Yeah, so I ended up <laughs> I ended up moving out of my dad's house in the beginning of twenty twenty one and I moved to the city of Atlanta. And I was living by myself. So now I had nothing to do but to sit there in my house working and figuring out who I was. Mm -hmm. So that gave me time to really look at my career. Is this something that I want to do or mm -hmm. is it another path that I need to go down to feel fulfilled? And so I started to apply to different jobs. I said, well, I like the money that I'm making. Mm -hmm. okay. The money was good. <laughs> I really, I transitioned into financial tech at that point. So the money was great. I had a brand new car that I custom built, mm -hmm. the brand new apartment in the city, and I'm living the life that I wanted, but it wasn't fulfilling at the same mm -hmm. time. So at that point, I'm like, I have to figure out a way to make money and love what I'm doing at the same time. Mm -hmm. And I love to travel. And I have my YouTube channel and I was traveling and things like that, but I'm like, okay, how can I do this more often? Mm -hmm. So I came upon being a flight attendant. One of my older cousins is a flight attendant. She's been a flight attendant for 12 years now. Mm -hmm. okay. And I seen how she was going to Africa for a month, and but she was still making her money. So I'm like, I could do that. So I started to apply to different airlines, and I ended up getting a job. So the misconception is that you have to go to flight school. You don't. You just <laughs> <laughs> y'all. I thought you had to go for no. Years. You don't have to go to flight school at all. You find you need to do your research on what company that you want to work for because every airline is different. Mm -hmm. Every airline has different stipulations for how they work, so you need to find the one that fits what your lifestyle is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, you have regional airlines, which those are just the airlines that fly within the United States. And then you have the airlines that are considered main lines. So that's like the big airlines mm -hmm. where they go and travel internationally too. So you need to figure out what kind of lifestyle you want to live. Mm -hmm. So that's what landed me to where I am now. Mm -hmm. um, the company that I work for has a great work-life balance. And they love black people. <laughs> and that was, that, and that, that's, a, that's a big thing in the industry. You want to make sure that your employer is going to appreciate your background. Okay. Mm -hmm. And 
that's how I landed at where I am today. So I just applied to different airlines. I was going through different interview processes and some of them, the interview process wasn't what I liked. So yeah. I knew off the bat, this is not going to be the company for me. Yeah. Straight up. So then I landed at the company I am now, I'm with now and my work life balance is great. I was on uh, reserve, so that means I was on call for six months. But it just depends on like where you're based at, mm -hmm. how long you'll be on call. I'm based in Atlanta, and for my company, it's a very new base. So we have a lot of newer flight attendants, so you can move up faster. Oh. And then some states are more senior, which means they are older bases. Mm -hmm. So it's a little, it takes longer for you to move up. Um, so you'll be on call for a little bit longer than you would if you came to Atlanta. Yeah. So that's what made me choose the base that I am now. So I was on call for six months. Um, it was rough. When they say your first year being a flight attendant, you're not going to make as much money as you think. They're not lying. Ooh. It's, it's something that <laughs> you, hard. yeah, it's something that you have to get used to. Yeah. But once I got off call, now I make my own schedule. Mm -hmm. I work when I want to work. I work as much as I want to work. I can pick where I want to go, like the trips I want to do. Um, you can see who is working that trip with you. If I don't like that person or I don't like how they work, I don't have to pick it up. And it's just, that's the nature of the game. So now my life is centered around my lifestyle. Yeah. And it's a complete 180 from where I was in the beginning of 2021 mm -hmm. so that's kind of what landed me to there and it kind of tied into my youtube channel as well because i want to show other people the lifestyle of being a flight attendant yeah so now i vlog when i'm going to work i'll show like me getting ready for work um the routine i do on the plane and then what it's like on my layovers okay so yeah i'm doing a little bit of everything but yeah that's how it's this is how I got into being a flight attendant. So, TV. notice how all the people here are doing things that they actually like to do. Yes. So, guys, <laughs> yes, so you may be struggling mm -hmm. yes. through things that you don't want to do. Come on, Jericho. At the end of the day, you need to focus on what's going to make you happy. Mm -hmm. Okay? All these people are happy and they're making money. And what you said that you went, you, listen, y'all, y'all don't think y'all heard her. She right. went, reevaluated what she mm -hmm. wanted to do aligned herself and projected and got there exactly a lot of people don't do that it's a path yeah it's a path like follow the path mm -hmm. it's not going to be like a straight road it's going to there's going to be curves in it but you're going to get to where you need to get to eventually come on plan mm -hmm. come so, on come on plan i just think that was really important that we pointed that out yes you know i don't know what is your end goal you do so much you cover so much you've seen a lot your experience what is your end goal? Do you want to be the Denzel? Do you want to be the Einstein? Because you're a math, you have a math degree. What is your end goal, and how are you gonna? How is the process of you now gonna pull that together for the end? So I think um, my end goal, if I could simplify it to anything, would just be to tell stories that are meaningful, that can um, help people in their day to day lives, right? And the process to do that will take me through some of every type of discipline, right? So. In order to play the role that I want to play, to guarantee that that role exists, mm -hmm. I probably need to write it. Oh, okay. Y'all right. ready to hear first. Right. <laughs> and then to make sure that, that that character is played in a way to where it serves the overall narrative of the story and the story is going a certain place and that turns out a way, it may lead me into directing. Oh, mm -hmm. y'all heard it here first again. <laughs> I started to really get creative with hair. Like I, once you see yourself in the mirror and you're not used to that image because when I came into college, I had a short buzz cut and I was, I had a perm. Mm -hmm. So cutting all of that off and then starting that journey of transitioning after that, you're looking at yourself going, okay, I don't necessarily like this, but this is what I have. It's time to style and get like creative because we can't have the same hairstyle for a week. That's how I am. I like to change my hair a lot. So that transition of, okay, uh, I can't really, I can't put 
a flexi rod in this because it's too short but yeah. i don't want to straighten it because it'll look weird mm -hmm. so let's accessorize it maybe let's add a scarf let's add a clip let's do this let's do that let's color it even if we want to so that following me all the way into after college and then deciding to start a platform around it was me saying to myself okay i'm comfortable now because i've been in this uh uncomfortable position where yeah. i step outside my dorm room and i'm like I don't know how this is gonna go, but I feel good about it. And if somebody yeah. asks me about it, I can explain it because it's me. It's not like somebody right. forced me to do it. It's like another so, journey to loving yourself. Yeah. Right. It's ex that's exactly right. right. It's re it's reinventing yourself and so rediscovering mm -hmm. your self love. Um, and that's a part of like the the nucleus of it's frustrated. Like, all right, guys, yeah. I did it first. It can actually happen. I want you to do it. I'm not forcing you to do it or forcing it down your throat, mm -hmm. but encouraging you to say, okay, it's not going to be the best, but nothing is really great the first time. So why yeah. not just experiment and then figure it out as you go. In your content creation journey, what has been your proudest moment or achievement, especially with you having different facets going with your mm -hmm. YouTube? You being young, you being a flight attendant, you traveling and vlogging, all of that, especially with representation on top of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How does that translate and what has um, been your biggest achievement so far? Um, actually getting people to subscribe. Um, okay. Yes. So it's a, a journey, seriously. You're actually getting people to watch your life what you're doing so you have to be interesting mm -hmm. and you have to have the personality you have to be charismatic and you have to be engaging with your audience for them to stay and actually come back and watch your content so with youtube you have to have certain criteria before they start paying you mm -hmm. so you have to have a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time so uh, how like i'm about to say how's the process is that hard easy oh um, no it's a journey mm -hmm. okay uh, <laughs> oh give me a little bit more yeah no more. it's a journey to, hours a yeah right right somebody has to sit there and watch you for four thousand hours <laughs> four thousand yeah Jesus. that's yeah it's a lot the trenches yeah <laughs> it's people they be begging in the wild <laughs> please <laughs> please <laughs> like comment please, and subscribe please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Make sure you go to the okay. next video and watch that one too. Exactly. Right. Yeah, so it's a journey to get there. So to actually see your subscriber count go up and your watch time, I feel like that's one of the most rewarding things because creating the content, you are the actor, the editor, mm. director. Yeah. You are picking the outfits. You're so yeah, the style. You're, the you're doing the cameraman. You're doing everything. It's a one man band. Yeah. Okay. So okay. once you're starting off, it's just you, yep. and then you'll see the other bigger YouTubers, and you feel like it's just them too. But no, they have teams. This right. Management. Yeah, they have management. <laughs> they have okay. different people that respond to emails. They may have editors. So. It's kind of intimidating because you're doing all of those jobs by yourself. Mm -hmm. So once you look at your channel and now you got one new subscriber and your watch time went up on your videos, you got people watching 200 hours of that one video, that's the reward for me. Yeah. Because you put in those hours to actually get that content to pop. There you go. Yes, so I feel like to me that's the greatest accomplishment when I see somebody coming to my channel and they may leave a comment here and then they'll leave a comment on a video that I probably made a year ago mm -hmm. which lets me know that you have continuously been watching all of my content so to me that's the biggest reward I love that that's so humble I love that yeah. she, she's for the, she's for the people for the people one subscriber at a time y'all okay. okay. yeah. better subscribe to her channel right? Right. Yeah. 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 Speaking about acting and stuff, mm -hmm. so um, you've been in a lot of blockbuster films and TV series. Can you share some memorable moments or challenges? Ooh, with yeah. some ribs. Give them some you know what Yeah, yeah, there, there are a couple. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, one, one, one I remember um, was on the set of Black Panther uh, during the scene with Chadwick. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, and wow. we're coming down the scene, uh, well, we're coming down the mountain to attack him. And he's dressed as Black Panther, and he's up against the rock. They said, all right, this is the scene we want y'all to gang up on him, really overwhelm him. And so we're swinging swords on him and stuff like that. And Chad looked up at me, he was like, hey, man, y'all ain't finna just beat my behind. I'm finna <laughs> take out a couple of y'all. And Chad started grabbing our ankles and pulling on our shins and stuff like that. And um, it was fun. And then I got to the trailer, and I, I saw some bruises on my legs. I said, oh. You might wow. have vibranium in that suit for real. <laughs> <laughs> Panther, man. Right. Yeah, so um, that that was a, a memory that you know I'll, I'll never forget on that one. How does shooting for them go? How mm -hmm. does the money go? How is monetizing? How does that all play into your work? Okay, so Ms. Tyler, uh, I will say for a lot of people, I, I I think when they see YouTubers, they automatically assume. <laughs> Mm -hmm. that because they have a channel or a platform that partnerships come to you mm -hmm. or collaborations come to you which once you get a certain to a certain place in your uh journey they will start to reach out but when you're starting out a lot of times it's you reaching out to them mm -hmm. um you really putting yourself out there whether you're emailing brands or you're going to different events so you can speak to the people face to face um, a lot and a lot of times you can do it with your content as well so for me in the natural hair family or category whatever brands that I used a lot of that's what I kind of went back through and said okay it makes sense for me to partner with this particular brand because I've used their products more than two times more than three times instead of just kind of picking someone because they do have a huge following and saying mm -hmm. I want to partner with them because you know that once you're if that collaboration or partnership comes to fruition that your your followers are going to be like oh and then you're exposing yourself to new followers mm -hmm. because that particular brand has a huge following so uh once you do get the partnership in terms of how your content is supposed to look they have guidelines you have to have you know a certain amount you know sometimes they want it shot in, in vertical versus horizontal oh, wow. sometimes they want you know five pictures instead of the one you normally take so you have contracts that you have to go through and read and make sure that you're not signing yourself up for something that two years down the line you're still yeah. on the hook for mm -hmm. because you don't have usage rights yes. or you don't have you know uh ip as we would say it where they can continue to post you but you may not get paid for it but mm -hmm. that's because you did not read your contract oh, wow. so that's once you once you get to that point, some people are blessed enough to see it early on where you may have a thousand or two thousand followers, but you know, you're lucky enough to get a collaboration. Some people don't see that until they get to 10,000 followers or 5,000 followers. But right now in this current climate, I think a lot of brands are starting to see that the, the followers don't matter. It's the actual quality of content and they work with you regardless. But it's fun because you, you're introducing your followers to this bigger brand and then that bigger brand is also putting eyes on you so you might have a little surge of engagement or followers mm -hmm. because now you're in this big space whereas you were in this smaller circle of audience so it's a it's supposed to be a two-way street mm -hmm. yeah um, and then of course if you get paid then you're getting paid to do what you love to do so that's the surface level of uh, partnerships and collaborations but it's always good for your creative resume to have those logos you know when you're pitching to people and saying hey I really want to work with you and they ask you who have you worked with before and you go well I don't really and they're like oh so this is your first time some people will say no thank you some people will say well great let's start something so it depends yeah. on the brand but to, you know, just be careful when it comes to those contracts. Yeah, please. Uh, Even actors. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it really it, any in any in any, in any industry, category, yeah. any industry. Yeah. Please read your contracts because you don't want to set yourself up where you have to get a lawyer, mm -hmm. where you have to you know go to court over something as small as a video. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. they, they will own your awesome. image. Yeah, they will own your, your image and likeness. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Get to know yeah. those okay. words, perpetuity, <laughs> uh, so all of exclusivity, <laughs> <laughs> all of those things. They are very real. Yeah, I'm learning something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. real. It's a piggyback off Tyler. She's correct. Everything that she said is valid. You also need to make sure that you have a rate card. Oh, yes, Lord. The rate card is very important because mm -hmm. it's 
value off of your engagement and how much you feel like your content is worth. Mm -hmm. And you want to make sure that you highlight the brands that you've worked with. Yeah. So that brand that you're trying to pitch to knows, okay, I have to pay her because she's worked with this, this, and that. Mm -hmm. She has the engagement to bring our company the money that right. we need. And also, as a smaller creator, don't be afraid to pitch yourself. Baby. Yeah. Put yourself out there. Mm -hmm. Because you just never know. A lot of brands have been going for a lot more smaller creators now because of the authenticity. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. They feel like the smaller creators are bringing the realness. And right. they're not just pitching to a bigger audience because they have that audience and they know that they're going to go click their link. They know that the smaller creator is a little more hungry. Mm -hmm. So use that to your advantage. Mm -hmm. And don't be scared to ask yeah, for the don't, money. Yeah, and don't be scared yeah, to ask right. for the money. That was going to be my like small little side question. Mm -hmm. You yeah. said something to the effect of maybe they get paid or you just getting the exposure. Right. So I don't get, let's say I, I partner with a hair care company. Mm -hmm. I don't get free products to try to it get. Depends. It depends on it what depends. you ask for. When you're starting off, usually they'll okay. send you what they call a PR box. Mm -hmm. okay. So they'll send you products to try and all of that, especially if it's a uh, beginning partnership, meaning mm -hmm. it's your first time. For them, they want to make sure they're not, uh, well, I won't say not wasting money, but they want to make sure to kind of get a temperature of what your followers will do now that you have their, their content or what a partnership, a paid partnership will look like based okay. on how you start off. Mm -hmm. So sometimes if you're starting off, you might want to say, hey, look, I just want $100 for just the time, mm -hmm. the time that I'm, I'm putting into editing and actually doing my hair and all of this stuff. And sometimes they will say yes, sometimes they will say no. It depends on the brand. Mm -hmm. But most of the time, they'll give you an option. And some this is where you put your foot down as a content creator and say, you know, a brand might reach out and say, hey, we want eight videos in exchange for product, which means they're going to send you products. They're going to send you their hair care products, and you have to do eight videos. Mm -hmm. You have to ask yourself, is that fair to me? Mm -hmm to create eight videos and the only thing I'm getting in return besides exposure is free product. Knowing your work. And yeah. then once yeah. you once you start doing because yeah. you're gonna bump your head a few times. Mm -hmm. So once once you do that a couple of times, you say, you know what? I've washed my hair three times this week. I need to start getting some compensation. Yeah, some compensation right. for this. And that's, that's when right. you'll start mm -hmm. to build your rate card, which is your price sheet for what you do. And you'll say thank you for the PR box, but this time, I'm I'm asking for this, mm -hmm. and they'll negotiate or they'll say thank you, no thank you, yes. and that's that. I, I will just point this out. All three of us have this thing in common: we're one selling ourselves, and mm -hmm. then two, we're selling a product. Mm -hmm. So you have to know how to market yourself, yeah. and then you know how to you have to know how to use that marketability to also market other things to people. Mm -hmm. So. When it comes to no, I feel like in the content world, when it comes to you getting subscribers, it's kind of like a no too. Mm -hmm. When you put a video out and you think you've done amazing on this video <laughs> and you don't get the feedback, nobody comments, yep. nobody's liking the video, nobody's watching the video, mm -hmm. that's a no. That's telling you that you need to go back to the drawing board right. mm -hmm. and figure out maybe that niche that you're trying to go into, maybe that's not your lane. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you need to go back to the drawing board and figure it out. Reconfigure what you have going on. Maybe you need to try a different lane. You may be trying to do the same formula that somebody else is doing, but it's not true to you, so it's not going to work for you. Right. They want to see that formula from that particular person, so you need to be original. Yeah. Figure out what works for you. So to me, that's kind of the same note. It's it's like you got to remix what you're doing. Figure out what works for you. And sometimes it's okay. I, I feel like I need that. When you get those videos that don't hit, you know, okay, I tried it. That doesn't work for me. Let yeah. me try something else. So to me, that's, you know, it's okay to do stuff. Maybe throwing something to try to stick and it don't work. Figure something else out. I like to shout your Instagram yeah, and YouTube please shout one more time. Yeah. Okay. Um, my Instagram and my YouTube is Key Silas. That's K I S O L A C E. All right. You can follow me on social media at Jaquin Hassan, J A C H I N H A S A N.
And last but not least, um, I am on Instagram and TikTok and YouTube as It's Frustrated, I-T-S-F-R-O-S-T-R-A-T-E-D. Frustrated, but with an O. I'm subscribing, yes. following right now. Please make sure to follow all of them, y'all. Yes. Thank you so much for listening. Woo. Hope y'all have a blessed day. Yeah. And we're going to end this. Podcast. And that's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs> So okay. that's why it's blue. Yeah, I mean, all of our songs yeah. got blue in it. Yeah. Yeah. We got gifts, y'all. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, y'all. So now I am finished with the panel. It was so much fun. I enjoy everybody from the podcast. You can follow Tyler at It's Frustrated. She has a YouTube channel. You can follow her TikTok and her Instagram and also Jaquim who is an actor which is really really cool so yeah y'all that's it for my first panel it turned out really good I didn't realize it was live but that's cool so yeah I'm about to go home clean up I have a meeting tonight at 8 then I have to be back at work five o'clock in the morning so catch y'all when i get back home i don't know why i'm so out of breath <laughs> but call y'all back